Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So let's continue on with the Q&A series. So this question came from uh, somebody on YouTube, um, GW Fitness, so thank you so much for this question. Great content. What I am concerned about is how to scale down after implementing all of these cardio sessions. It seems like I never quite get it right. Sometimes it feels easier to gradually add in sessions to keep my calorie deficit going. But when it's time to reverse or maintain, we stop cold turkey and that affects my overall activity levels. I'm not really sure how to nail it down. Thank you so much, cheers. It's a really great question, how to scale down cardio. The example that I've given here, I think is pretty common. I know a lot of ladies uh, like to do their regular high intensity interval training sessions and 30 minutes is probably the typical length for some of the high intensity training classes. I know Les Mills do them and a lot of y'all attend boot camps or you probably just get on the Stairmaster or make up a little circuit. Uh, three 30 minute sessions, totally 90 minutes for the week. Let's say as a hypothetical that each of those sessions um, burns about 350 calories. Let's make that a five because it doesn't fit. <laughs> All right, made a mistake. One of the ways I think that I like to track or at least monitor the consistency of my training is with my Apple Watch. I'm not wearing it today, but it certainly helps kind of gauge whether or not I'm putting out the same amount of work uh, within each session. What they can be useful for, not so much the absolute calorie value that it provides or it lists, but enables you to track relative changes. So as you get fitter, you may notice that your heart rate during that 30 minute hit session starts to decrease. And over time, you might even see the total number of calories that it's saying you're burning go down, which is a normal part of, I guess, that cardiovascular adaptation to the exercise. similar to the way that our metabolism can adapt to changes in caloric values, um, the same thing can happen with our fitness levels. So looking at these three sessions, that means that your total weekly energy expenditure from that high intensity cardio comes out at about 1,050 calories. When you are starting to do a reverse diet, one of the goals would absolutely to be, you know, taper down all of that training. You've just come out of a heavy fat loss and you no longer want to be putting out that same kind of output. How do we actually scale it down without having meaningful increases to our body weight? We actually talk about this a little bit in the reverse dieting guide. I have a chapter that really breaks this down and goes into a lot of the, I guess, nuances of this topic. How does that impact our weight? Well, using the example of an individual that has a maintenance calorie um, target of 1500, so their weight is maintained uh, when they're consuming 1500 calories. If we were to take out 1,050 calories over the course of the week, that works out to be about 10% of their total daily energy expenditure, which is pretty significant. You can take this number and divide it by seven, um, and that's going to show you that it's about 150 calories per day deficit, which is a lot. Rather than starting with just getting rid of it all, I think a better approach um, to this would be to taper it down. So instead of doing all of them, just start with one session. So that means that you're reducing your total weekly energy expenditure from this high intensity cardio by only 350 calories. Or if we look at what that works out to be on a daily basis, so 350 divided by seven days of the week, it's only 50 calories, which is actually a whole lot more reasonable and a much lower percentage of this particular individual's current maintenance calories. So therefore it's much less likely that this decrease in cardio is going to impact her weight in a negative way or significantly. So that's only 3% instead of the 10% if we dropped all three. For that first week when you do this, I would say make sure that you don't change any other variables. So make sure that you continue to consume your current calories exactly as they are. Don't change anything else, just change one variable. So reducing down to two sessions instead of those three sessions. Make sure that you track your weight 
as often as you would normally to ensure that you've got enough data points to correctly assess what your average weekly weight is. And if your weight doesn't change um, over the course of that seven day period from your last week's weigh-ins, well then we can probably say with a good amount of confidence that your metabolism is kind of adapting back down. And remember, we've only really reduced your total daily energy expenditure by about 50, and that's a fairly insignificant amount. So if you didn't see any notable weight increases, and remember to allow maybe a little bit of a buffer of say 0.2 to 0.4% of your total weight each week because it's normal to have day-to-day -day fluctuations. But if your week-to-week -week weight change doesn't change by more um, than say 0.2 to 0.4%, well then you can go ahead and reduce the next 30-minute session. So now by week two, you're down to one of those sessions instead of doing all three. Hopefully that gives you a bit of an idea about how to manage your cardio when you start to reverse diet. Don't go full in and just drop it all because otherwise it will be a meaningful contribution um, and an increase in your TDEE or total daily energy balance um, and that might result in an unnecessary amount of body fat regain. So taking a more conservative approach um, with a slower reduction over time, you're far less likely to have um, some of those weight increases. Thank you so much for watching guys. Again, thank you so much for the questions. If you have more of these, please feel free to leave me some comments on whatever platform you are listening in on and I will see you next time.